Hello, ladies and gents. Now, this collection of videos that we are about to start is all about learning constellations. Um, through the years of teaching astronomy, one of the things that I've discovered that m is that most students enter the course wanting to learn the constellations. Now, if you talk to any astronomer, um, learning the constellations is not a scientific thing because these are just patterns in the sky. But if you're going to study the Earth and you don't know where North America is and you don't know where South America is, it's much harder to do. So as we study astronomy, it makes a lot more sense if you actually know some of the constellations. We are going to concentrate in this course just on the constellations in the northern hemisphere. Um, if you go to Australia or Africa, you're kind of on your own. You're going to have to learn your constellations all by yourself before you get there. So we are going to concentrate on the ones that we can see from our mid-latitudes, about 45 degrees above the equator. Because of the fact that there are somewhere in the neighborhood of, well, there are exactly 88 constellations that have been defined by the International Astronomic Union, um, and about half of those, so there are about 44 that are actually visible, and parts of another one, so 45 that are visible in the north, those are the 45 that are going to be in this set of notes. What I've done is I've broken this down into 12 different sections, and we are going to go through a short section once per week. So my goal is that once per week, for about 12 weeks, you are going to have three or four constellations that are going to be fair game on any quiz or any test. By the end of the course, by the midterm, you're going to have all of the ones prior to that midterm. And by the end, um, fair game are all of the 45. So it won't be too bad, as my as an old joke says, how do you how do you eat an elephant? Well, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. So we are going to do these constellations a few every week, and hopefully it'll make it a little bit easier. So let's get started. And I think that's what I just said. Okay, very first constellation we're going to talk about is Aries the Ram. Now, as we begin our study of the constellations, we're going to go in the order of the ecliptic. And we are going to go in the order of that little mnemonic device, a time gone, cowboys loved viewing little stars, oh, so cold and pretty. So we're going to start with Aries, which is the A for a time gone. And Aries represents the ram. Um, if you remember some mythology, this there was Jason and the Argonauts went on a quest to find the Golden Fleece. Well, it was the Golden Fleece of this ram. And the ram constellation looks in the sky just like a, a collection of small kind of a curved line. It doesn't look like a ram to me. Um, here's the stars that make up the Aries constellation. And Aries is, of course, right next to Taurus, and that contains the Pleiades. So this is Aries the ram. The next one is Taurus the bull. Taurus the bull, um, in the sky, it's going to look something more like this. And this is supposed to represent the face of the bull, the face of the bull. And it contains one of the big features that I use to recognize Taurus is its red eye. And it's a big red star called Aldebaran. And Aldebaran um, makes up this big red eye of the bull. And he's got his face and he's got his two tusks. No. Horns, horns of bulls, not tusks. And then the rest of him here is supposed to represent going down his back and then his feet. Now, here is another picture of Taurus which actually gives you the size of the, of the stars on the star chart. And you can see that Aldebaran is quite big. And this is between Aries and it is near Orion and, of course, Perseus. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention is that this constellation contains the asterism, the Pleiades. The Pleiades are called the seven 
sisters. And those seven sisters are uh, those seven stars. If you ever see a Subaru car, the Subaru car has the symbols, the stars on the front of the Subaru is supposed to represent the Pleiades, which are the seven sisters. The next one is Gemini. Gemini is for the twins. There are two brothers, Pollux and Castor, and Pollux and Castor are these two very bright stars, and they are supposed to be two brothers that have an arm around each other. And they kind of look like that. Um, so you kind of have two stick men that look like they're standing very close together. Here is the constellation uh, Gemini. Castor is the alpha star. Pollux is the beta star. And those, are, of course, are the two brightest stars in the Gemini constellation. The last one in this chunk of constellations is the ecliptic constellation, Cancer. Um, now, Cancer is supposed to represent a crab. And when I make sense out of this crab, I make sense out of it by saying that these are the pincers and this is the two, the body of the crab. But if you look online for pictures of this crab, it looks like this, that this is supposed to be one of these is supposed to be the pincers of the crab, and the other one's supposed to be the body. Um, yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me, but what do I know? So here is the constellation Cancer. Um, this crab is supposed to be the crab that was sent by the goddess Hera to pinch the foot of Hercules to prevent him from killing Hydra, the water snake. Um, Hercules crushed it and it was then put into the heavens for its bravery. So that is a little story behind Cancer. But you can see Cancer is near to Hydra, the water snake. So their mythology, they connect all those stories together. So that will do for this one, and we'll come back with another video later.